Digital Image Works is pleased to present films of Ted Gay featuring the Pennsylvania Railroad Eastern Region and the steam and electric era, films taken from 1936 to 1952. We will visit the New York Division, the Harrisburg Division, and the Philadelphia Terminal Division. These films were taken in the area around New York City and Philadelphia during a period of peak traffic on the Pouncey. You will see ample evidence of why the PRR was nicknamed the Big Red Subway. We will take you to Old Penn Station in New York, to several locations in New Jersey, to Philadelphia, and to points on the main line west of Philadelphia. We begin at Penn Station at 7th Avenue and 34th Street in New York City. Here is a street level view of that classic structure taken in 1947. track level, the layout has changed little since then, but the equipment is another matter. The motive power and the variety of rolling stock that was there in the 40s is something we can see only in film now. We leave New York, ducking into the Hudson River Tunnel. Emerge from the west portal of Bergen Hill Tunnel into the Jersey Meadows, at the time a near wilderness within sight of the most populous city in the country. Then watch at trackside as trains pass near the location of the old Manhattan transfer in the Jersey Meadows. Here, steam and electric power lays over and is staged for westbound runs at Meadows Yard in South Kearney. Looking toward the east from the platforms of Pennsylvania Station in Newark, we see the structure of the massive drawbridge there, supporting four tracks of the PRR plus the two tracks of the Hudson and Manhattan, a Pente affiliate. West with a P5A, a P5A modified, and four cabin cars. An unusual move since freight trains normally bypass the Newark platforms. A clocker arrives headed to Philly, followed by an H&M train from Journal Square. Several trains arriving from Florida show parts of the fleet of trains from the south that the Pensy ran with the seaboard, the Atlantic coastline, and the Southern Railway. Modern Bud Lightweights predominate.
50, we see a westbound Black Diamond, which will be taken over by a Lehigh Valley Alco PA, just west of Newark. Looking west, we see an eastbound Broadway Limited as it arrives from Chicago and demonstrates the spit and polish attached to that special train. A Jersey Central Camelback shoves some freight into the team track on that line city branch. Here, Ted filmed the action from the eastbound platforms at Elizabeth, New Jersey, where a congressional passes, followed by a pair of freight. The first with a P5A out of Waverly Yard, the second headed east with a P5A modified. <laughs> pulls in, and military hardware for export follows on a train bound for Harsimus Cove in Jersey City. Several passenger trains then pass, featuring a wide variety of cars behind GG1. Amora Tower is the beginning of the six-track territory to Union, at which point the branch to Perth Amboy and the New York and Long Branch takes off via a flyover. Here, two westbounds pass. The streamlined P5A modifieds were required to lead whenever possible since the original P5As provided little crew protection in their box cab form. After a brief visit to New Brunswick, we joined Ted in the rear vestibule of a westbound commuter train for a quick sprint to Princeton Junction. Both development and undergrowth have encroached on the track in the 50 years since these scenes were shot. Then as now, Princeton Junction featured the Princeton shuttles called Dinkies, and it was the heart of a high-speed straightaway.
passes Nassau Tower at Princeton Junction. Next, we get a quick look at a gas electric at Trenton. Having crossed the Delaware at Trenton, we see the nicely manicured median accommodating the flyover for Morrisville Yard and the Trenton Cutoff, a freight line bypassing Philadelphia. We then approach Holmesburg Junction. enter the Philadelphia metropolitan area, once one of the greatest manufacturing centers in the United States. Its transportation system dominated, of course, by the home-based Pensy. Holmesburg Junction was the division post between the New York Division and the Philadelphia Terminal Division. We will return to the Philadelphia Terminal Division after taking a look at a small portion of the Harrisburg Division on the main line west of Philadelphia. We begin our look at this very busy territory at Coatesville during World War II. Wartime trains of crude oil head east toward the refineries of eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. These trains ran due to the threat to tankers from German U-boats and continued until the pipeline, known as the Big Inch, was built from Oklahoma. Prominent in the background is the Coatesville VA Hospital. At Thorndale, Ted Gay filmed several mail trains discharging and picking up mail on the fly. The supply milk cars are considered rare. After the agent ties up the mail, a train picks up a Philadelphia bound sack and discharges another. As westbounds pick up mail, freights enter and leave the low grade Philadelphia and Thorndale or PNT branch, a westward extension of the Trenton cutoff. The commuter train makes the employee-only stop at Thorndale Yard. The agent tosses up company mail onto the MU baggage car. Wire train steams in the background at Thorn Tower and then comes out onto the main, shoved by its obsolete but still viable E3 Atlantic. The Philadelphia bound freight heads for the flyover behind three P5As, while a westbound empty hopper train comes off the PT branch behind a single box cab. The relatively new electrification still required maintenance and the pantograph on the tool car provided grounding for employee protection, while the steamer provided propulsion under the de-energized wire.
Thorndale Yard served several functions. It was a local yard for the branches and industries in the area. It was a base for helpers both east and west, and it was a calling station for steam through, local, and helper engines. Some M1 class steamers worked the yard in 1938. The record train is seen ready to go to work with power provided by a freshly shopped L1S out for its break-in run. In 1947, the roster showed only 14 K2s. Here is one of them, nose-to-nose -nose with a lightweight E3 Atlantic. P5A modified head west past helper power at the sanding tower at Thorndale. The crew is then shown handling an H21 hopper with a flaming hot box, a common problem on cars with friction bearings and a frequent cause of accidents, as we shall see. electric, but the help is steam on this westbound. Three cabin cars helped to deal with the imbalance created because eastbound loaded trains were shorter and therefore more numerous than the westbound. In 1940, an eastbound limited with many heavyweight Pullmans passes under the coal wharf. Those are hoppers up on top. And the sun sets on the coal wharf as Ted heads east to Downingtown. We're looking toward the west along the PNT branch at the Downingtown High Bridge. Always a tough shot to get as the photographer pans to the right to a derailment caused by a rock slide onto a moving oil train. The photographer even included a brief self-portrait. The 
cleanup of this 1942 accident required quick work. With traffic at its wartime peak, the Pensy could ill afford to have a key freight route blockaded. We are looking east from the platforms at Downingtown Station in 1943. The eastbound has several lightweight cars in its consist behind a smoking GG1. GG1s had oil-fired boilers to provide steam heat and air conditioning for the cars. A freight follows, breaking form by having a box cab P5A in the... shows up. It's nine cars bracketing an H-class consolidation and an N6 wooden cabin. An eastbound oil train with an M1-class mountain gets help over the main line from an L1S as it approaches the small Downingtown Industrial Yard. And here, an eastbound express overtakes a local, again just east of Downingtown Station. We mentioned the consequences of hot boxes. A hot box, which is an overheated bearing, if undetected, leads to a burnt off journal and therefore to a derailment. If the derailment occurs at speed, it can be disastrous, especially if the train is carrying a flammable commodity such as coal, or worse, oil or ammunition. This 1942 wreck happened at Downingtown, and the flaming bearing ignited the coal, providing a triple challenge to the PRR. All four tracks were blocked, the catenary wire was down, and the fire had to be extinguished. As we can see here, all of those things were being addressed at once. A year later, a westbound freight passes the scene of the derailment next to the Downingtown Paper Company. An eastbound freight with an L1S helping two P5As passes, and then from an elevated perspective, we see action at East Yard, where a Reading crew is performing a Dutch drop. This was the interchange with the Reading's Chester Valley branch. The overpass in the distance is Chestnut Street in Downingtown. Here we'll watch a little wartime traffic. Note the stock cars being expedited east at the head end of an oil train.
Several empty westbounds moved the tank cars back to Texas for more loading. The empties got as much attention as the loads in this national emergency. The troop train heads west. The soldiers got to sleep sitting up, and their food was prepared in the baggage cars spaced throughout the train. Sperry rail cars is seen working at East Yard. Ted filmed wartime action at Bradford Hills. Some of it on the PNT, some of it on the main line and some of it on both lines simultaneously. Bradford Hills is located just east of Downingtown, where the main line and the PT branch come very close together but at two different levels. Whitford, the two-track P&T branch crossed the four-track main line on a massive skewed truss bridge. By 1995, the P&T branch had been removed and the landmark bridge had been scheduled for demolition. A feature of a Griff Teller calendar painting, the bridge is seen here from both levels. Note the GG1 with its front pantograph up, an unusual occurrence. eastbound train trailed by a wartime troop sleeper. Philadelphia Terminal Division featured extensive commuter service, this example being of MP-54 MUs arriving at 49th Street Station on the Westchester branch. Here's a quick look at a westbound Florida train at North Philadelphia. watch from 30th Street Station offices as clockers approach the upper level of the station, having originated at Broad Street Station in Center City, Philadelphia.
while it is still possible to board trains here at the upper level of 30th Street, Broad Street Station is long gone, its last train having departed on April 27, 1952. The station, a terminal really, faced 15th Street directly opposite Philadelphia's classic City Hall. The structure was begun in 1881 and grew rather haphazardly over the years. It experienced two major train shed fires, the first in 1923, which destroyed the classic single-span train shed, and the second in 1943. In these views, we look around the abandoned train shed at Broad Street Station in 1952. A train is temporarily stored there, but with no overhead wire remaining, revenue trains are never again to depart Broad Street Station, Philadelphia. PRR employees and equipment were used to pick up the catenary wire, rails, and hardware, while J.D. Morrissey, a Philadelphia area contractor, handled most of the remaining demolition. Ted, or Theo Gay, was there to film many aspects of the process. It was sad to see, but I think we are all glad he was there for us. Directly across Pennsylvania Avenue from Broad Street Station and facing 16th Street was and is Suburban Station, the terminal for most of the MU-operated commuter or Suburban service. The Railway Express Station, which can be seen in this view, remained in service as the demolition of Broad Street Station progressed. It was the last facility on the so-called Chinese Wall to remain in service, but less than a year later it too closed and its function was taken over by new facilities adjacent to the main post office and 30th Street Station west of the Schuylkill River. These views, taken from the perspective of Suburban Station and others from ground level, we watch as crews remove the track and wire from the retired facility. The Pensy consolidated all through train service at 30th Street Station and began development of the vacant site by erecting its headquarters, the Transportation Center, or 6 Penn Center Plaza, on the site.
all of the present buildings in Philadelphia with Penn Center or Penn Center Plaza in their location names, along with the new Conrail corporate headquarters, occupy land once part of the Broad Street Station complex. Pennsylvania Railroad's name disappeared with the Penn Central merger of 1968. Nevertheless, the Pennsy's heritage lives on in important mainline routes for Amtrak, Conrail, and several regional commuter lines and freight carriers. We hope you have enjoyed this look at the PRR in its prime and will join Digital Image Works as we continue to commemorate the PRR upon the 150th anniversary of its founding in 1846. One of the first big businesses in the world, the Pennsylvania Railroad's legacy lives on in many, many ways.